Oh my Absolutely god. Don't I, I had no idea. Holy crap. I had no idea. This is telling. Oh shit. Holy crap, that's telling. What's going on, Reject Nation? Greg and John here. So as we're prepping to do an interview with the director of Willy's Wonderland, which by the way, thank you to everyone who saw our movie reaction for that. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check that out. We got an interview here from Vanity Fair for the director of the Snyder Cut, Zack Snyder himself. And apparently the headline for this is Justice League, the shocking, exhilarating, heartbreaking true story of the Snyder Cut. And a lot of people sent this article over to me. I heard mention of something called Jesus Joker. I hear the photos in here. So what we're gonna do, obviously, because I'm sure that's what everyone really cares for us to go check out that's first. So we'll get that moment. out of the way. I'm gonna, big reaction. I'm gonna sc scroll through this article to see where that photo is. Afterwards, we'll go through this article. We're gonna read through everything from beginning to end in real time, but you know, I'll be jump cutting around it. All right, so we got the article here. That is Gal Gadot. That's a, ooh, that's 300. Up. Oh. Whoa. 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 <laughs> oh my. Okay. <laughs> oh. All right. Jesus, Jesus Surgeon Damn, Joker. Damn, I, I heard Jesus Joker. I didn't know what they're, they that has the crown of thorns and everything. Wow. Oh my God. This is going to be a really jam-packed dream in terms of symbolism. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Ah! Man, Jesus. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, that is nuts. That is gnarly. Yeah. I'm not sure how to feel about this right now. Just looks that much more like Marilyn Manson. <laughs> This looks like a Marilyn Manson album cover. I mean, <laughs> Zack Snyder do definitely does a lot of religious symbolism, especially yeah. in regard, I don't know if this article will go into it, but especially in regards to Jesus. I mean, I feel like that's such a go-to thing with Superman, especially. Mm -hmm. They did it in, I think even the pilot of Smallville, they do it in Superman Returns. Zack Snyder definitely doesn't shy away from that in Man of Steel as well. And Jesus symbolism is one of the most go-to things, I think, in a lot of movies and such. I guess the last thing we were expecting Expecting is for it to be associated with Joker of all characters. So in that sequence, which is a new one that they shot for this, Batman, in order to get help, he has to put all ego to the side and turn to the last person he ever expected to turn to for help and saving the world, and that's Joker. I guess. So, and it's supposed to be a dream sequence, so it's not not real, you know, he's not gonna show up looking like this. This could just be like a quick flash of something. Either Joker is mocking him as like, I'm your new savior or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, or, or just me being the way I am existing outside of any and all paradigms is what will save, you know, whatever circumstances or something. Or maybe it'll be just left open to some interpretation. Yeah. Or maybe they'll just be in a <laughs> church and it'll be really in your face. I, when I heard Jesus Joker, <laughs> I thought Joker with a beard. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a new take on Joker, and it would certainly be befitting of Jared Leto. I did not. Yeah, was... Crown of Thorns is a little bit like, oh, oh, you mean Jesus Joker. I, I feel like people... I wonder if people are mad. Of course people will be yeah. mad. I mean, symbolism is one thing. Having Superman fly out of something or fall with his arms out yeah, like this for saving and, the world yeah. is one thing, but... It's writ large in a way. But this is very much slam bam in your face, yeah. Jesus Joker. This wants to provoke you. We don't even talk Talk about the article. We could just talk about this Jesus Joker the whole time. That's it. <laughs> to get two videos. Out. <laughs> wow, I don't. I, I'll have to wait to see how it goes. Uh, I, I'm not sure how I feel about this right now. I mean, he said the Joker's gonna, you know, try and deconstruct Batman. So maybe in that way, he's gonna like use this to get under his skin or something. Maybe like he'll that. dress yeah. up as Batman at one point. That would be cool. I think we're gonna see him in a wide variety of costumes. Mm. Oh, so is this the hospital gown outfit and then he's wearing the crown of thorns right here? Yeah. I thought that was like the Jesus, His not tunic. rogue. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> and he's got the mask too, like the surgical mask gotcha. and the gloves. Jesus didn't have uh, kitchen gloves. We don't know that. You That's weren't true. Around that, Jesus man. was a hypochondriac. <laughs> you don't know that. You don't know what Bethlehem was really like. <laughs> Anywho, guys. Place. <laughs> All right, well, it's breezing through this. It doesn't look like the article <laughs> talks about it, so that's out of the way. Let's talk cool. about the article now. Neat. <laughs> In late 2017, months after the couple cut ties with the superhero epic amid an increasingly demoralizing battle with Warner Brothers, Deborah Snyder sat in a screening room on the studio lot alongside Christopher Nolan, who hates Warner Brothers now, <laughs> one of the movie's executive producers, as well as the director of the Dark Knight trilogy. She braced herself as the lights went down. It was just a weird experience. I don't know how many people have had that experience. 
you worked on something for so long and then you leave and then you see what happened to it. I'm leaving at the end of the month for Colorado. Chad's gonna be in charge of John's hands for a week, so I'm gonna have a very similar experience. Yeah, yeah, and you're gonna be on that flight next to Christopher <laughs> Nolan while it happens. <laughs> After their private screening of the weeding cut, Nolan and Deborah Center emerge into the light with a shared mission. They came and they just said, you can never see that movie. <sighs> in the Werner Herzog voice from Grizzly Man, you must never watch this tape. <laughs> <laughs> and then Deborah added, because I knew it would break his heart. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my what God. A nightmare. So then they're talking about amidst this time that Autumn took her own life, which obviously created a major conflict for Zach and Deborah while working on the movie. It's such a lightning strike in the center of this whole saga, Snyder says of his daughter Autumn's death. It has informed everything we've done since. Their daughter's death was the reason the Snyders walked away from Justice League, realizing their fight and spirit was needed at home. You know, I feel like this is such a neglected part of the story. Absolutely. Because, yes, there was already studio conflicts and issues that Zack and Deborah were battling with Warner Brothers and such. This is a part of the story that seems to just kind of fly under the radar when this was a big reason why he didn't continue to fight for it. Yeah, and I mean, I think a lot of people might easily forget that it's moments like these that remind you about, you know, what's really important in life, you know? And, and the article says, now she is the main reason he decided to come back. Oh. At the end of the movie, it says, for Autumn. Aww. Aww. I mean... Yeah, I mean, I guess we, well, all of us could have, a lot of us could have expected that, but that's still really sweet to know yeah. that it's actually here. Without her, this absolutely would not have happened. Oh, wow. Interesting. And the article then talks about how from being with Denise Weber and Kirsten Ellen before and the amount of children that Zack Snyder ultimately has had, uh, a lot of them being adopted, and the filmmakers often said being an adoptive father is one of the reasons he was so invested in the story of Kal El, a powerful being who became Superman thanks to the love and care of Jonathan and Martha Kent. You know, people are always like, he just wanted to make a Batman movie, but I'm I like, know. he's always loved Superman, yeah. and it's actually pretty neat to know that this is a big reason why. Absolutely. And why he really seems to love Jonathan Kent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that character in particular, well, because he's <laughs> Jonathan Kent. Yeah, I think he views himself less as Superman and more as Jonathan Kent. Yeah, oh, that's trying to oh, make okay. a that, that actually really clicks now. More than three years after Autumn's death, Snyder still slips between the past and present tense when talking about her. She's the only dork. She was the only fan. The rest of them, he shrugs. Today, Eli is interested in filmmaking, but Autumn was one of the only children who matched her dad's kid-like enthusiasm for gods, monsters, aliens, and superheroes. Man, that, that's, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. She's super creative. She was a writer. She was at Sarah Lawrence to be a writer. Wow. Snyder swipes through his phone to show a selfie Autumn took in the Letterman jacket worn by Ray Fisher's character in Justice League. Wow. Okay, so... I don't know, some puzzle pieces are starting to click together to, in terms of what is so personal for him. Yeah, and especially, especially with, with Cyborg with again. Cyborg. <laughs> wow, oh, boy. It's, it's really starting to click. Wow, this is a really good article, guys. It's, it's a really long one and in-depth, but he goes pretty much into big depth about uh, his daughter, Autumn, talking about how when dealing with her depression, things about, like, she would say, what is my worth? What am I supposed to do? What am I about? Uh, the conversation was like, of course you're amazing. What do you mean you're worth? You're worth more than anything in this world. And she would just be like, yeah. Yeah. She adored sci-fi. Her main characters are always in this battle with things from another dimension that no one can see, but it's a serious war, and that war was happening to her every day. I think so many people are in that battle, and they smile and nod at you. This is this is actually a lot. This is rough to read. Yeah. Someone as someone who's struggled with depression for his whole life, this is really, really rough. The fact that a studio had lost faith in Snyder's ability to make Justice League seem mundane and pointless after Autumn's death. I that makes imagine. sense. So eventually he left the project, obviously, from a lot of the circumstances that we're, a lot of us are aware about. So as this article goes through the trajectory of starting from Man of Steel, the reception that a lot of us are very much aware about with Batman v Superman, he talks a lot about in depth. Guys, go check out the article. Yeah. <laughs> talks a lot about in depth about how in BVS, the, the fan reception, how disheartening that was, yet how it all led to even films like Suicide Squad and Birds of Prey that still exist within the universe that he created, how he made like bold decisions with casting Jason Momoa as Aquaman when the mm -hmm. studios were like, I don't know about that. And Gal Gadot when she was considering quitting the business entirely. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, he's made some bold choices that undoubtedly I think have done DC better in the long run. So like to sum it up, Diane Nelson, who was president of DC Entertainment at the time, says she appreciated that Snyder was more in, into deconstructing the familiar than just recapitulating it. 
Zach is a masterful visual storyteller who goes deep on individual characters. For some people, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. And for other people, that becomes a problem because they have fixed opinions about who these DC characters are and are not. I don't know, Jesus Joker. <laughs> That's the definitive take I've been waiting for all these years. Okay, this is interesting because, you know, all the stories about John Berg and Jeff Johns that have been coming to light recently. Uh, Snyder says uh, he knew why John and Berg were on the set. You could babysit, he says. Many filmmakers would have bristled at the intrusion, but he was gracious. It didn't bother me too much because they weren't that threatening. I just felt the ideas they did have were they were trying to inject humor and stuff like that. It wasn't anything that was that was too outrageous. But Warner, oh, this is okay. But Warner Brothers did nick some of his more sweeping notions for Justice League, like adding a romance. What? I did not oh, know about any my. of this. Any of this been leaked? Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne and Amy Adams' Lois Lane, who was mourning Superman's death in the previous film. The intention was that Bruce fell in love with Lois, and then, whoa, this wow. is wild. This is like an injustice storyline. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then realized that the only way to save the world was to bring Superman back to life. So we had this insane conflict, because Lois, of course, was still in love with Superman. We had this beautiful speech where Bruce said to Alfred, I never had a life outside the cave. I never imagined a world for me beyond this. But this woman makes me think that if I can get this group of gods together, then my job is done. I can quit. I can stop. And of course, that doesn't work out for him. It didn't work out for Snyder either. The studio said no. <laughs> I don't know, man. It actually sounds really interesting. Well, yeah, because at first you go, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, Bruce like, Lois? That's crazy. <laughs> and then you hear it and you're like, oh, man, that's kind of an interesting conflict. It, it, yeah. Yeah. If it means that he's got to bring Superman back and that, yeah, he can actually reach some kind of resting point of fulfillment as a character, you're like... That's kind of ambitious. I'd like to see that. So true. You know, it's also true. I just got an energy drink juice in my eye. Oh, what's that? You have like supervision now? Nope, nope. Just pain, pain. <laughs> Among the issues with those length of the film, there was a mandate from Shujihara that the movie be two hours long. That order had a paradoxical impact because it meant eliminating much of the heart and the humor the studio wanted, like a comical romantic subplot between Flash and Iris, and the latter of whom was absent entirely from the Whedon film. That that sounds like the kind of frictions you would run into, because like, how do you add all that stuff without taking time for it? So how am I supposed to introduce six characters and an alien with potential for world domination in two hours. I mean, I, I can do it, it can be done. Clearly it was done, referred to Whedon's version, but I didn't see it. It wasn't done well for most people, that's for sure. <laughs> it, it was done somehow. <laughs> Oh, this is telling. Oh, shit. About this weed and stuff? Oh, no. Oh, damn. Oh. I just breezed a couple sentences. <laughs> Holy crap, that's telling. Reports that Snyder himself asked Whedon for help were false. Johns, one of the studio appointed babysitters, had been planning a Batgirl movie with Whedon and Snyder, and others say Johns recruited him to do rewrites for Justice League. Once again, Snyder was gracious and even hopeful. I thought maybe he could write some cool scenes. I thought that would be fun. Damn. Soon it would became clear that Warner Brothers was given Whedon more and more power. He would not just advise during reshoots, but also do some directing himself. Oh, Holy no. shit. While up. Snyder was on set, Snyder says he only had one conversation with Whedon about the studio's notes. Reeling from Autumn's death and finding anguish in their work rather than relief, Zack and Deborah quit. I oh my god, I, I had no idea. Holy crap, I had no idea. That's really I thought shady. it was he left and then Whedon came in, but damn, Whedon was already there while Snyder was making this. Yeah, they and were then he, like uh, fading him were, in. Oh shit. They were that like literally wild. doing it while the man was still on set. That is wild. Yeah. That's um, gotta hurt. I mean, like, uh, you know, it's business and all that stuff, but like that it doesn't seem very ethical in terms of just like leadership, you know? We just lost the will to fight that fight in a lot of ways. A lot of us, the whole family, were just so broken by losing Autumn that having those conversations in the middle of it became like, I was like, really? Frankly, I think we did the right thing because I think it would have been either incredibly belligerent or we just rolled over. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that is not right. Yo, I'm more excited for the Snyder Cut now than ever. Oh, right. Damn, that is not cool. Okay, so then we got this quote here from a studio executive who requested... And um and 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 you know me anonymity. You're wrong. <laughs> when we got to see that Joss, when we got to see what Joss actually did, it was stapifying. It's the roof, the ruber on the rooftop. 
Uh, so goofy, <laughs> stupefying the robber on the rooftop. So goofy and awful. The Russian family is so useless and pointless. Everyone knew it. It was so awkward because nobody wanted to meet it. What a piece wanted to admit what a piece of shit it was. Why didn't they say something? In it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like how would they not be even more up in arms realizing that they just messed up worse than they already did? <laughs> and then of course, you know, we know the journey of what ended up happening eventually as Zach took time away, and then the Snyder Cut movement came into fruition, and then Eric airplanes and banners and people <laughs> being shot out of rockets were <laughs> saying they the were billboard the on the cut. moon for the Snyder Cut. When the Capitol happened, uh, Capitol riots, it was all, <laughs> all about the Snyder Cut. cut. That's yeah, what it really that's what was. It was all about. And they were like, yeah. we've already greenlit it. Yeah, it's coming already. It's coming. What are you guys ready or about? see these ads we keep dropping. And we get into the discussion about the toxicity of Snyder Cut fandom. It was a really great quote from here from this psychologist named Drea Let. Tamendi. What I have observed is an enduring false sense of ownership, which can manifest as abuse, threats, and strong, intense reactions when a story doesn't go their way. Fighting for the unseen cut of the film became a cause. In some quarters, the worst behavior m metastasized. They're shouting, and people are listening to them. Even if it's negative comments, they're getting positive reinforcement to continue down that path. When a big studio is like, let's destroy an entire movie to placate <laughs> you guys, you know? <laughs> Snyder cringes at descriptions of the abusive tactics. I 100% think it's wrong. I don't think that anyone should be calling anyone anything. I've always tried to get people in the fandom attention to do good things. And of course, as everything started going, and then eventually Toby Emmerich, chairman of Warner Brothers, sat down with Snyder and talked about what's another way they can do this eventually we got to the point where we're at right now but here's a really interesting part holy crap that is there's so many interesting things in here initially says snyder warner brothers just wanted to release the raw footage on his laptop whoa dick move finish it I, yourself fans i was like that's a no <laughs> that's a hard no and they're like well why you can just put up the rough cut snyder didn't trust their motivations i go here's why three reasons one, you get the internet off your back, which is probably your main reason for wanting to do this. Two, you get to feel vindicated for making things right, I guess on some level. And then three, you get a shitty version of the movie they can point at and go, see, it's not that good anyway. Oh, so no. maybe I was right. I was like, no chance. I would rather just have the Snyder Cut be a mythical unicorn for all time. Respect. Respect. <laughs> no, yeah, I think it's, it's things that is a terrible idea. He's a hundred percent right about that. For no, what other way do you interpret that? For a movie of that size and budgetary scale, no. <laughs> no, how else would you interpret that? You released that in like a hundred years for free or something. <laughs> oh, this is wild. Snyder estimates that it costs around seventy million dollars to undo Whedon's redo. For that. HBO Max gets four hours of hotly anticipated reprogramming the Hollywood comeback story of a lifetime, yet Snyder himself gets nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting paid, oh. he says. He was paid the first time, of course. This time, he wants creative control and foregoing a fee helped. I didn't want to be beholden to anyone and allow me to keep my negotiating powers with these people pretty strong. Whoa. Damn, dude. <laughs> this is solely a passion project. Yep. <laughs> At That's, this point, it has become that. That's and, legit. and a fight for what you feel wronged for. Wow. You know, I, I gotta say, man, I am more excited than ever for this. I love every Zack Snyder film now. <laughs> the fact that he doesn't want any money for this is no, gnarly. Yeah. And he's he's putting in the most time and effort. Yeah, he it. literally went, we could do this the absolute wrong way or I'll come back and do it the right way for free. But, but yeah. Wow. Yeah, big respect. The Snyder Movement has contributed half a million dollars to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention through donations, sales of merchandise, and auction of props. People have been saying, oh, they attack people, says Zebra Snyder, their eyes tearing. But this fan base has saved lives. As much as they wanted something for themselves, They've come together for this. Some come together, actually. <laughs> They've come together for this amazing cause. Um, that was more like I shouldn't make a joke during this quote. <laughs> also, also humanity. <laughs> you feel so helpless trying to help someone, and you don't know what to do. It's literally life or death. 
and I felt like we didn't really know where to turn. This is so gnarly to me. Okay, so then it ends off with rebuilding the story he had always envisioned and what invigorates Snyder the most. He can go as deep and dark as he likes. He can say, hell the DC's official timeline for the characters and let this alt version of the Justice League story wind up wherever he pleases. He has put Superman in a sleek black suit instead of the iconic blue and red. He's added the Joker, Jared Leto. He has reshot the ending with a hero cameo that will blow hardcore fans' minds. Mephisto! <laughs> 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 well, maybe a device that would be the <laughs> ultimate mic drop. <laughs> he, yeah, he also presented the movie in the boxy 4x3 format rather than a widescreen so that one day it can be watched on IMAX screens. You cool. see, that's cool. For so when IMAX theaters reopened, then we could get a re-release of this. Up, I think that's really cool. And I bet that helped his case with WB. <laughs> yeah. Get those expensive tickets. The director is also layering in some deeply personal elements. The movie closes with Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah before by Alison Crow, who also sang it at Autumn's funeral. Wow. This is like a big tribute to her as well. It was Autumn's favorite song. Now it's an elegy to her. Oh. Justice League, however anyone else feels about it, it's made of the things and people Snyder loves too. When you think about the catharsis of it, if I was a potter, I would have made some pottery to look for some ways through this. But I'm a filmmaker, so you get this giant movie. He wants people to love it. If some don't, he's all right with that, with all of it. Whatever comes. He's okay. What is my worth? What am I supposed to do? What am I about? Zack Snyder's answering Autumn's questions for himself. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, I think this is absolutely heartbreaking and it's beautiful. Yeah. And there's some real surprising things in here. And to also see how we're diving into in this article, we're diving into Autumn and the story that happened there with her, which I never thought they'd really get all personal or, or um, specific about, which yeah. they didn't get too specific, but I always thought those details they would reserve uh, like any and all. And then you come to find out that, oh, it's because it's all kind of part of the cycle here of what led to this he, movement and how they stepped away from this movie for her and now they're making this and it ends for her. Yeah. That's like, beautiful. It's fascinating to kind of look at all these facts presented and to look at it through this lens of like, it, it does seem like a truly human endeavor because, you know, at the... Bef yeah. Yeah. Before this all happened, it's just like, oh, they're clashing heroes and stuff together. But now, especially reading those remarks about Autumn and whatnot, like, it does almost seem like, yeah, maybe, especially being able to go back and add to his previous cut, he probably was able to work out, yeah, some of that anguish and grief through this story, through those, you know, invisible fantasy worlds like he, he referenced. And yeah, like, it kind of confirms in a way the horror story you hear about how much of a cold, heartless machine Hollywood can be. And it's interesting and, and refreshing and, and heartening in some ways to see that, you know, for whatever you debate about Zack Snyder's content, his movies, his philosophies or whatever, he does seem like a really human guy who does want to make just, like, really passionate art, you know? Whatever that may be. And and yeah, I do appreciate like, for all of this, I feel like he could have walked away and just left it forever, but he's used this terrible situation for a lot of good things, and ultimately I feel like that has paid off through the Snyder Cut, you know? It's like, it's the weird ultimate reward that we can all get a catharsis. It's like now, I never expected to be like, damn, I might have like an emotional experience during the Snyder mm. Cut. Oh wow, that's beautiful. What do you think about this article? There's a link in the description box for it. I, I read the whole thing in detail, you know, because we, we have to jump cut around this, <laughs> but I read the whole thing in detail. Yeah, leave your thoughts down below, subscribe, hit that like button, keep a lookout for our review for the Snyder Cut, when it does come out March 18th. See you guys soon.